Our unique planet Earth, full of all kinds of species, is what supports our life. Human being has occupied this planet from hundreds of million years ago, continuously consuming its abundant resources and adapting it as our home. But this will eventually bring us to a problem, a point where we have taken too much for granted and resulted our planet Earth to run out of resources. This consequence not only will destroy the whole human being, but also let all lives to disappear. Thus, we have to gain awareness and start making a difference. Sustainability, a word we hear almost every day in the 21st century, is a concept easily approved, yet it has not gained people's awareness and has not been taken in action by everyone. But it is surely something that, if everyone is conscious of, will effectively save our planet, all lives on Earth, and of course, including ourselves. Sustainability is a concept of maintaining a balance of society, economy, and environment for current and future health. But how can we create a sustainable future? Today, we will explore the equilibrium of ecosystem and what changes can we make to maintain the ecosystem in balance. Now you may question, what is ecosystem equilibrium? Well, before digging in, let's first understand what is an ecosystem. To examine the ecosystem, ecologists clearly and conveniently divide all the things within it into two categories biotic and abiotic factors. An ecosystem describes a certain environment and all the living things that are supported by it. It does not range in size. An ecosystem could be as small as a rotting log or as large as a desert. Ecology is a scientific study of the interaction between an organism and the environment that it adapts in as well as the other organisms that share the same environment. Ecosystem equilibrium is a community made up of roughly three levels, producer, consumer, and decomposer. It is this concept in ecology describing the state of balance in an ecosystem, in other words, balancing those three levels. Disturbing one element in the ecosystem it can disturb the entire ecosystem. This is where the biotic and abiotic factors takes its position. Which in order to maintain the ecosystem balanced, we say the biotic and abiotic parts of an ecosystem should be in equilibrium. Biotic factors are all the living things within an ecosystem, meaning everything that has a life. For example, animals, plants, insects, microorganisms, etc. Biotic interaction with the ecosystem is ubiquitous. Plants that provide food for herbivores affects the temperature by hiding the sunlight. Its root holds the soil in place, taking carbon dioxide and release oxygen. Animals such as a beaver changes the flow of the river when it builds a dam and also changes the surrounding landscape. Large herd of cattle can overgraze a piece of grassland and cause the soil to erode. Coral in ocean can form large reef that becomes food and shelters of other marine organisms. On the contrary, abiotic factors are all the non-living things within an ecosystem, meaning everything that does not have a life. For example, temperature, sunlight, soil, and water. In a land ecosystem, temperature as an abiotic factor 
affects the types of plant that grow, which affects the animals that depend on the plant for food and shelter. Light provides energy for plants to produce food through photosynthesis, which feeds almost all of the other living things on Earth. The strength of sunlight determines the type of plant in the land ecosystem. Organisms in the soil breaks down dead animals and plants, which then becomes part of the soil. The nutrients returned can affect the plant growth. All living things need water to live. Plants need water for photosynthesis, while animals need water to digest food and release energy. Also, the type and number of organism depends on the amount of fresh water available for its inhabitant. Too much or too little of any biotic and abiotic factor makes the ecosystem unstable and brings about change. Therefore, the population of these organisms are maintained by something called the limiting factor, which is any factor that limits the growth of the population in an ecosystem. This could be lack of nutrients in soil for plants, large population of predator limiting the amount of prey, food supply affecting how often organisms reproduce. Eventually, the population will reach a state where it can no longer grow, which the maximum number of individuals an ecosystem can support is called the carrying capacity. But now you might ask, how does all of this relate to us? Well, human action is one huge element that breaks this equilibrium of ecosystem, stimulating and accelerating the process of damaging our planet. One good example would be acid precipitation. Human technology is like a double-edged sword, cutting through human problems with one edge while scaring the environment with the other. Coal-burning plants, cars and trucks, metal smelters, and oil refineries truly does bring us good, but at the same time, they are invisibly damaging the ecosystem, breaking the balance of nature's seesaw. They produce the most dangerous air pollutants that form acid in the atmosphere, which then, it returns to the surface of earth in the form of snow or rain called acid precipitation. Acid rains are 40 times more acidic than normal rain. To the ecosystem, it kills soil bacteria and both aquatic and terrestrial plants, damaged leaves, fungal and bacteria infection, tree roots, and eventually, when it is carried to the river during spring runoff, it kills the fish. To us, it makes marble statues, carotting metal and cars become dull, damaging buildings, and most importantly, cause health issues such as respiratory problems like asthma and bronchitis, as well as cause water ice and can also irritate our skin. As we said previously, disturbing one element in the ecosystem can disturb the entire ecosystem. The acid precipitation that kills massive aquatic organisms can result in other organisms to lose their food supply. This means a decline in population, as well as breaking the food chain. And breaking the food chain is a huge problem that will affect every single life on Earth, including us. Maintaining the nature's seesaw should be our responsibility since we're the one who is taking so much from nature. Maybe a small change in your lifestyle can make a big change for our planet and as well as for our dissidents. There are many ways to reduce the pollution problems, such as to take public transportation once a week instead of driving a private car and that way maybe you can contribute in avoiding a fall of acid rain. In the future, always think twice before you do something. Think about
whether doing it harms our environment, or what can you do instead? And at last, live a sustainable life.